So, you're still a noob. But hopefully from watching the last noob mistake, you're no longer offering up your enemy some lines of death for him to absolutely murder. So you're making progress. Now to another common mistake that I see in online battles very, very often, it's the missile mob, which is gonna be very similar to the line of death, but with a little bit more to it. Again, this is a very simple problem and one that is thankfully easily corrected. So we'll begin with an example straight from Quick Battles. This one against a poor noob playing as Bordalo, who's decided to bring some peasant bowmen along. Now he's committing the first cardinal noob sin by putting all his units in a line, creating lines of death of course, not only with his bowmen, but with his infantry as well. But lucky for him, I'm playing as the old green tide, so he doesn't really have any wind spells to worry about. However, the mistake here is the same as the line of death because all of the units are next to each other. But it's not magic we have to worry about here, it can just be one lone unit. Because that one lone unit will be able to attack two of yours if they're too close to each other. Or in this case, chase them off. You can tell here that this guy has skirmish mode enabled on these, so they're going to run away from anything that tries to get after them. Which is all well and good, they'll stay safe, but it means they won't be able to fire and they'll just be running away. Rendering them absolutely useless. I've got one unit disrupting three. That is a huge win for me, even though I'm not doing any damage to them. And you can see I'm just going to keep the pressure on them so they can't fire. That's all I'm trying to do. Now with a bit of luck for our noob here, his missile units have parted into two groups. Which means they'll finally be able to pick those orc boys apart and get rid of them. So yes, a victory over some greenskins. They're gone. Jolly good. Let's deal with the rest of- Oh. By the lady, everyone else is dead. All the time that they were running away, they were not able to support their troops and the rest of their army is dead. Thus, they're pretty much screwed. So it's a simple case of disruption with one unit against three, all because they were so close to each other. Now what's ended up happening here is what should have happened in the first place. This one unit that is not being attacked can now support the other two, which is gonna force these goblin wolf riders to get the hell out of there or die. Now let's just give a more controlled example of this to make sure we understand. Here we've got three dark elf dark shards units controlled by the AI altogether using the skirmish mechanic. Now I'm going to bring in one cheap unit of skeleton horsemen. They cost only 400, but they can easily disrupt over 2000 golds worth of missile units. Now all I'm really doing is abusing and using their skirmish mechanic against them. Every time I move towards them, it pushes them back and then they stop firing. This is all just buying time for these guys, my melee infantry, which is going to come over and kick their head in. I'm just going to bounce around all over the place, disrupting them, preventing them from firing, protecting my infantry that's coming, and maybe doing a bit of damage along the way. And all this is possible because these units are too close to each other. I'm easily able to bounce between them because there's not really very far to travel to get to the next one. And as you can see, it's very easy to destroy these missiles when they've basically barely fired any shots at all. So it's all just about keeping missile units busy so that they can't do anything. And if your missile units are close to each other, you make this very easy for the enemy to do to you. And of course, it's not only this kind of disruption and pushing you back that you need to worry about. It's actually being attacked. If two units are right next to each other, it's easy for a unit to bounce between them to disrupt them and to stop them from firing. Or just with a bit of good positioning, they can attack both units in one go. This is often worse than simply being disrupted because your unit is going to die or at least get somewhat damaged. So if our missile units are too close to each other, as in right next to each other, they're liable to get disrupted, potentially by one unit just pushing them back, or attacked by one unit charging into two or three of them. So how do we fix this? Well, the answer should be very obvious. If you're bringing lines of infantry or lines of artillery even, this is just a surefire recipe for death. And the solution is very, very simple, which you've probably figured out by now. All you gotta do is space things out. But there is a little bit more to it. While it's good to space things out and put some distance between them, making them harder to disrupt and to attack for one single unit, there needs to be more teamwork going on to ensure everybody's survival. So if unit A gets attacked here, units B, C and D can turn around and help him. They can shoot whatever unit is attacking unit A, thus giving it a better chance of survival, and they can all work to protect each other. So how about a controlled demonstration of this? The same setup as we had before. I've got three dark shards now, there's horsemen and melee infantry coming at me. All three of my units are nicely spaced out so they can't easily be attacked by this one unit of horsemen. We're then going to focus fire on them and I don't have the skirmish mechanic on so I'm not going to be pushed back and stopped from firing. 
Now we've got some nice damage on these horsemen already, and because all three of my units are nice and spaced out, he can only attack one of us at a time. And when he does, my other missile units can turn to help protect him by shooting that enemy. So I'm not going to skirmish away with my missile unit, I'm going to let them take some damage, but it's going to mean that they're going to get shot by the missiles. In this case, I've got one unit working on the horsemen and one starting on the infantry. See, these horsemen are very worn down now, we've only taken a little bit of damage, and now they're going to attack my other missile unit, but because they're all spread out, they've got a long way to go, and it means the unit that was just attacked can now act as the protector for the other unit. And lo and behold, we'll get rid of this cavalry easy enough, and then we're free to deal with the infantry. And then again, because we're spaced out, this infantry can't get us all. Now, my Dark Shards on the right are in danger of getting into melee here, which we definitely don't want. So I'm going to pull this unit away and allow them to be disrupted for a while so that they're safe. And what we're going to try to do is use one of our other missile units to shoot those Nehekara warriors to stop them from chasing my other Dark Shards. So all my missile units are simply trying to support each other and give cover fire when one of them is pursued. This is only possible because of the space between them. And my pursued unit here is now able to stop because this unit pulled away for a second. They can do a little bit of damage and then pull away again. The old shoot and scoot, if you will. All while being supported by the friendly units. So leaving some good space between all of your missile and artillery units allows them to support each other if something should come after them. If they're all bunched up together, they can easily be disrupted or attacked by a cavalry, an infantry, a single large monster could bounce between them. They could be easily disrupted because there's no distance. And I know this is a control situation, it makes it look very easy. In an actual battle, it is much harder, but space your units out, have them protect each other, shoot and scoot, and you should fare much better. If you keep putting your missiles and artillery in little missile mobs, then, well, you're just asking for them to be taken out. It's amazing how much difference a little bit of space can make. Hopefully that all makes some sense. It's fairly simple, just like the line of death. All you gotta do is spread things out a little bit more and also try to have those units support each other. So there you go. A fairly simple little change that can make a big difference to your game. However, this does somewhat underline a bigger problem with missile units in multiplayer. But that is another noob mistake for another day. For now, the moral of these noob mistake stories is to space your army out. At least with these first two. I'm trying to start with some simple things that people can quickly fix to get better. As this series goes on, we'll get into some slightly more complex and interesting matters. I hope you've enjoyed this, thanks for watching. I will see you in the future.